you longer. So in the bottom right, we have Recon as the Abyssin <laughs> in the purple. And on the blue, we have the Ottomans played by the Mista. On the top left, we have Puppy Paw playing Joan of Arc. And to his north, Wham playing the traditional French. And go back to uh, Recon, right yeah. Sorry, that, sorry, sorry. No, I, I appreciate you uh, you keeping us in track. Sorry, yeah, and the, and the Recon, obviously, here. Yeah. Docs from everyone. Nanny, carry on. Uh, it's going to be interesting. The fish are going to be extra vital for French. A sieve notoriously greedy for food. The issue is they have no... Well, I want to say they have no bonuses to Docs. And that's true to a point. If by Castle Age, Joan of Arc can consecrate, eh, consecrate docks, at which point she not only gets extremely cheap ships, she also gets the Gallius. I don't think this will go that long. I think water will be decided before then. So, the French may want the water. They're not likely to win it. Mm. Abbasid, on the other hand, and Ottomans, uh, at least have one Civ, who is very good at producing ships. Abbasid obviously get cheaper docks. So they're going to probably have an edge. We'll see if that pays off. It comes down to the players, of course. But uh, also, if they do happen to lose it, Abbasid have a very strong economy to fall back on. Let's go. I think in the end, as is often the case with hybrid maps, it's going to heavily come down to what we see the players choose to do, how they micro those demos, and how that plays out. Who will have the, the last dock standing? And while that is normally the deciding factor of a hybrid map, I just want to say double French, Joan of Arc, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see an extremely early dive on a base. And I don't, and you know, a player kill, which would maybe shock the other team if they're not expecting it. But French have that ability to just say, okay, I'm not, I'm gonna lose on water eventually. This isn't my specialty. But those Vils are looking juicy. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> oh, I said French don't do fishing great, and the miss is already over here. Five spears, burned down a house. He's on Puppy Paw's dock. The Dark Age rush is in full swing. Yeah, I feel like I'd be going for the dock first, um, just because... I, I, I'm preempting that they'll get to feudal and get an archer ship out, and I won't be able to burn it down. So I typically go for that first, and then I'd go for the house. So I'm not sure the thought process behind that. I guess you're forcing him into building another house, um, but I'd, I'd rather stop the fishing economy. So I'd, I'd really like to know the, the play behind that from Mister and, and why he chose to do that. But yeah, technically true. I don't think it'll be a huge difference. The dock is still going down. Yeah, but you get a lot more food back. Like, getting the house doesn't really There's give you much, much advantage. There's actually a much bigger issue. Look to the north of the lake. Uh, a spear decided oh. to patrol north to make sure another dock wasn't going down. And look who's building said extra dock. Yeah, yeah I, I also just want to point out as well, which I thought you were talking about, is what Wham has built. You've got the Chamber of Commerce coming out. Because he can, he can trade straight across because of these spawns. In the last game, you couldn't do that. I oh, know you can. Hang yeah, on. Yes, so he can. I he can straight to, straight to here. This is an extremely effective map for this landmark, actually. Uh, mm. It's quite long. The trade will pay off quickly. They have a, a market in the corner. And most importantly, he could actually try to... Uh, go into possible fast castle and into arbalatiers that's one way you can alter your composition to help deal with these two sibs who usually do quite well against the traditional night harass uh, yeah so 
speaking of things that are small but funny, Puppy Paws Scout, ignored for some time by the Mista, is actually taking off, uh, you know, a fair amount of health from this dock. Although a villager now responds, heals it up. Just, just an amusing anecdote amongst the real horrors of this war. <laughs> yeah, John Diarc as well, very much out of position, chased away by the Ottoman units, and now building houses is the only XP she's going to be getting. I'd say, I mean, let me get on to Puppy Poor. Yeah, so she's she's not far off level two, um, but you know, you you'd want a level two by now, right? It's yeah, quite a while uh, ago, right? If everything's going ideally. She's level two by the time you hit the feudal age. Yeah, which would have been, you know, a good two and a half, eight, three minutes. Yeah, three minutes ago, maybe with fishing economy, maybe three minutes ago. Yeah. So she is in a bit of a pickle right now, to put it like. So yeah. Uh, if I check Wham, he is. Does he have his eco tax? He grabbed broad axe. It makes sense. You're on a water map. That's at least one trader who started the long route to the market. 52 gold per trip. Like I said, that'll pay off immediately. To the south, after taking out the dock, uh, Mista Spears have moved on to the gold. Uh, Puppy's rushing up a tower, but he might be idled off a second resource now. And this seems like it could just continue to build in momentum. We might see a quick game if okay. he doesn't find a way to stabilize against these Ottoman uh, units. Agree, agree, and and as well, something to know is outside of the the war on the on the on the fishing economy, uh, Mister is going into trade. He went for the trade, the Sultani trade network. He's starting to trade. I really wish he goes for that Vizier point if he ever gets the chance to. Um, and also, we've seen some units flown about from Recon. Uh, and he's spotted the French trade going on, and we've got the Abbasid uh, military school units right up on that trade post, ready to stop that, which is going to be, yeah, this is, is not good considering the units as well from the Mist are coming in, um, and potentially po prodding and poking as they're doing on this. It's, uh, yeah, with the trade behind this, yeah, it's looking, it's looking good for these guys. Yeah, Wham is stabilized on his side. He didn't lose his docks. His ships are actually... This is unusual, but they seem like they, they have the advantage against the Abbasid here. They've pushed them all the way under the Abbasid dock. So that's going well. Oh. Wham's problem is just going to be if Puppy Paw doesn't manage to stabilize his side of the map. Which isn't Puppy Paw's fault because he has two armies over on his side. Yeah, like I think said, the armies are getting less and less relevant over there though with the the state of water right now. Um, Puppy and Wham really decisively winning water right now. Yeah, like I said, surprisingly, uh, with good micro and uh, just better commitment of units, you might notice Puppy Paw, despite his awful state of affairs, also managed to build uh, enough navy to support. So they just kind of ran these two straight off water, which is yep. oh, quite a surprise. What a welcome one. Uh, so that dock's going to go down in an instant. On the south side, you can see that Mista's fishing is currently garrisoned up. He has put the uh, emplacement on it, but that dock's not long for this world if they don't do something. That's Puppy Paw's scout is still on that dock, and he's worked it down by 30% health again. <laughs> That um, scout has low-key done more damage than any other single unit this game. And so, he finally gets shanked for his troubles. <laughs> so, um, water's all well and good. Uh, and if anyone's capitalized on a Mongol victory uh, by giving up water at an early point and going full trade and not having your opponent spot it, we'll know that this is going to pay dividends. He's getting 91 a pop, and that's without the Vizier point. I wonder if he puts oh, it in. Yeah. I'll be keen to know if he oh, does yeah. put it in. I'm keeping tabs, and it's almost and, about to pop. And if you want to talk about an economy that can keep, that can match or surpass fishing, Abbasid, once their farming technologies come online, 
S tier farms. They blow fishing out of the water. But it is a massive investment. It's look that would be a long term plan, but with this much trade going on and with time to spare after the damage they've done to Puppy Paw, we could be looking at that in the future. In the short term, though, we can't deny that this water victory is a big victory for Team French. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on the other side, the Abbasid units who were denying trade end up getting cleaned up. Joan of Arc is nearby and she gets the experience from it. That's going to help Puppy Paw start to catch up. And with the raid fully shut down on the south side, uh, Puppy just needs to mass up now in preparation for the next time Mista's army moves in. And if he does that, I would say that this game has uh, definitely turned uh, compared to where it was five minutes ago. Mm. And we are very only 12 minutes into this game and we have already seen such a massive momentum shift. That really shows just how much goes on when you get to a hybrid map like this. Yeah, uh, very different to the last oh, oh, game we watched on Joan this Bark as well. Surrounded and okay, and Mista doesn't commit, but there was a very real chance he could have finished her off there. I think he decides to save his spearman mass is the the deciding factor. Yeah, he rallies back now. Joan of Arc realizes how close she was to danger, pulls back to safety. Uh, the knights though are going to harass. They're going to run into this wall by Mista and find out that it's not so easy. And this wall, as you said, is paying dividends because he doesn't even know about the trade yet. Yeah. And that's the most dangerous thing about it. The fact that they don't know it's there, so they haven't started to plan to counter. And both sims benefit hugely off of trade. And you can now see Recon also going for his own trade with the double market coming down. As soon as I said that, by the way, on the north side, by pure coincidence, so Wham tried to go in for a night raid of his own, ended up running away from Spears, and accidentally sprinted right into the trade line. His knight does go down, but he got a clear sign of now it he knows. right yeah. after I said that they weren't, that they might not be aware. This is amazing. So we're now seeing water versus trade. This is a this is a matchup of the ages. This is. Not only the, not yeah, only the but participants, but the uh, I, I like this combination. I want to know, I want to know which benefits more, and I believe it's trade. So I would agree with you that it's trade. I would say water pays off much faster. Trade obviously pays off better long run. What's interesting is that because the trade's not a secret, Wham literally sent his units immediately to sprint to the back of their base. Uh, walls are coming up. They're literally trying to full wall the whole trade route now. Yeah. And, and the knights are just sprinting down, picking off traders anywhere they can. So if he's successful, it won't be much trade. I suspect his knights aren't enough to shut it down completely. No. But they're now aw Ottomans and Abbasid trading are two of the scariest things you can imagine. Well, this is One has you... the best gold generation, mm. and the other pulls in a secondary resource. So they do want to think of a way to shut this down long term. For sure. And you've got to remember as well, you know, throwing these small armies into it, this is much better. But it will get cleared up by, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of uh, attempts from from uh, from Recon over here. The, the thing is, is each trader pays for itself every time it goes back. So producing more if you lose one doesn't matter that much. Yeah. So we have two fights here. On the far right, Wham decided to go deep into the base. He fought against uh, Recon's army also he could push that trade again fairly successful trade but on the opposite side mr built rams destroyed a house and is going in on puppy paw who's trying to defend with joan and some knights right now so we have two separate fights each trying to sway the momentum uh, I see Recon Scout in the back, by the way, sees that now the other team's trading as well, uh, or they always have been. Wham's still trading from his uh, yeah, he's just of commerce. He's just setting up one in the north now. Yeah, but what's funny is that Scout sees it 
it doesn't really matter that he sees it. Everyone's trading. Everyone knows everyone's trading. What matters isn't that you know it's there, it's how are you going to get back there and stop it. So. Exactly. And we've got one knight just doing a tab on, tab on a couple of traders. He's, he's got it steadfast in this position. I oh, know he hasn't, my bad. It was just uh, steadfast there because there were so many things to hit. Yep. And we've got Rams coming down as well now for Wham. So Wham's committing to this push quite heavily here. He's got, this is what's great about yeah. having the, the water is that he has this fleet defending <laughs> any kind of... He can fall back to this position, keep his army alive because it has you know, the, the ability to be defended by those ships, which is great because he's got because they, they, these guys own the water. <laughs> What They've got the fishing for extra food. They've got the ships patrolling to make sure the docks don't come back up. They also support the army if any fight happens near the shore. I will say the armies, uh, let's see, we have men at arms out from Puppy who rushed castle. That's part of why he got dove so hard before. We have Janissaries pouring out from Mista who, you know, I'd like to see crossbows here, but Janissaries do almost as effectively. Um, Joan of Arc in there, probably, she's not level 3, so I don't think she wants to be a part of this. This is actually a dangerous mass from the mist on the south side. But in that same vein, well, no, on the north side, I think Puppy Pot doesn't have such a critical mass that he can kill Recon. Recon is down in age, but I'm not sure that's going to matter. If these two, if he can just hold out, then the damage that Mista does to Puppy might be enough to sway things. This is a back and forth fight. Both sides have taken quite a bite, quite a bite out of the other's economy. So we're in a situation similar to the last game where the teammates on each side are just looking at each other and saying, hey, I hope you've got you your side over there, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. I'm yeah. You know, I'm deep in this guy's base. I just need you to live. <laughs> and they're relying on their teammate just to be able to, you know, fend off what's coming for them, even when things look particularly grim for two of our players. Yeah. All right. Mista produces two more rams. He only sends in one. That might have been an accidental misplay. Uh, on the far side, yeah, Wham can't get a decisive fight with this army from Recon. They just keep shadowing each other. He does do the smart thing. He moves to the trade line. A Recon won't engage. He's interrupting the trade. He yeah. says, well, if you won't fight my mass, then I'll fight your economy. And exactly. And force you to fight me. Yeah, exactly. It's like... It because this trade is now completely shut down. down. Nothing is going back or forth now from here. Whilst this yeah. this army stays here, which is, as you said, you know, it's, it's a castle age upgraded army versus a much larger and reinforced feudal army. But uh, on the left side, by the way, Puppy Paws Joan hits level three. She spawns the champion. That's that gives her very elite units. So even though he doesn't have the mass, he uh, he now actually has superior units, uh, just in quality. And he is, oh, a mango comes in from the Mista. I think Puppy probably dies here uh, for pushing, but as long as he stalls Mista, and the fact that he's now shown, hey, I have the better quality units, that's going to have an effect. For sure, and he's also forced them to build a wall on the trade line. There's no gate there yet, because there's still four spearmen there, so trade is now not working. So now they're up against uh, a fully-fledged fishing economy, some trade in the back line for Wham, units in in, in puppies in, in Recon's base. I mean, this is, yeah, this is looking, I, honestly, I think this is looking really good for Puppy uh, and Wham right now. Speaking of, Wham chased that army north, he forced them against the wall, and he finally got the engagement he wanted. It's going down as we speak. And uh, I'm not sure, I'm going to check. Did the, the upgrades never came in. He's only trying to grab veteran archers now. His mass is gone. So he just ate uh, that fight. Yeah, without know, any upgrades, yeah. Castle. 
which is the last thing you want to do you just spent a lot of resource on castle and then you've lost your army fighting without the upgrades of what just cost you a shed load and now the upgrade comes in it's too late there's only 12 13 of them left he's lost his mass wham can just push now he is pushing he actually he actually took down the tc and he has a ram on the house of wisdom I think this was the final engagement they needed. I think that Recon's dead, and although Mista is still ahead of Puppy Paw, it doesn't matter. Puppy Paw's the one who's backed in at break when under pressure. So, yep. like, Puppy could keep fighting from this position for at least another 10, 20 minutes, whereas Recon, I don't think, can recover. Yeah, the, oh, I see Wham is actually walling the trade out now. He's fit. He's making sure that recon space is isolated. So, if that wasn't already the final blow, it's about to be. Because oh well, yeah. The wall goes up, there will be no trade, and the Mista won't be able to reinforce his partner Rico. And if I'm correct, I think we're about to head to game two. Yeah, Mr. Surrender is out on the queue. Oh, you must be a little bit ahead. There you go, Mr. Surrender is excellent. So we now have a game three uh, in that, in any, We've already had one, this is two. Now we've got a third. So we are going to the best of three. Uh, I see a few people it's, asking it's about- It's what you want to see in a final. <laughs> I know it our is. competitors don't want to see it, but I know everyone in the audience does, and I'm with them. It's a people's game. We're going it's to the final game of this best of three of the finals of the last Empire Tournament. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly.